Alright, what's up? Live on Avania. Still, you bunny in a cabin. Do, do. Oh, go. Oh, good. I'm not sure. You're gonna leave right here. <laughs> nah, me I just go. <laughs> but I don't tell you for live video. Say I de wait you. I don't de wait. So let me tell you guys. So I um, Flavor does this thing on. We're going to talk about it. Actually, ah, uh, yeah. Instagram live, and I logged in last week, mm-hmm. and um, your friend Waga mm-hmm. said, "I book a batago." Yeah, and you said, "Ha, <laughs> okay, ja." <laughs> Flavor threatened me. Hmm. That's uh, he's ready for this show. And now you took it up on yourself. I said, okay, okay, I'll deal let's, with uh, it. Let's <laughs> let's see how good you are. But uh, I mean, uh, you know, I'm a fan. And it's a pleasure for to have you here today. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. on everything. Thank you. You had a great December still. Mm-hmm. How come? Because people don't make money last year. How were you still making money <laughs> in December? Well, um, I would say I think December is like um, the season. You know. Uh, I call it all the time. I say this. Well, anytime is is approaching December. It's like, flavor season. Uh, it's my season, you know, to cash out. <laughs> <laughs> Which you did. Congrats, man. You know, um, and also I think it's also because of um, maybe the kind of music I play. Yeah. You know, I think my music is timeless. It fits into any kind of event. So even if we're not doing the crowded shows and the, are you ready now? You know. Yeah. Um, there's something for everybody. Yeah, there's something for everybody. I even performed for church, for nature. I said, I, when I got the book, and I was like, what am I doing here? What's going on? Wait, wait. <laughs> that church, oh, as in diocese. Um, what's it called again? I've forgotten. Like the nature. Actually, diocese? Was it Catholic or Anglican? Catholic, Catholic. So they called it to perform to do what? Was it a harvest or something? Or maybe they said a harvest. <laughs> so I came in there, I was like... Do they called? know you <laughs> they were waiting for me. You uh, didn't know you have a song called a shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they know, but you know, see, but that kind of movement, uh, I had to work on the repertoire. Like I said, you know, my kind of music is um, I'm flavor. Yeah. And, you know, it's a sweet taste. It's, it fits everything. Today, I can be vanilla, you know. Tomorrow, I can be strawberry. We're well, going to get to that because <laughs> I've always wondered how I'm listening to Flavor's <laughs> album, One Minute. Yeah. You know, I'm doing praise and worship. Oh yeah, and the next minute I'm hearing Jagger. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is really going on here? But we'll get to that. Let's let's talk. Well, I was talking about the Instagram live, and I want to talk about that because we I mean, COVID is still with us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a very crazy time for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and we had a crazy lockdown last year in Nigeria. Yeah. And you started this Instagram live thing. How did that start? For a lot of people who don't know, you know, you had this, it was called Ndiboto FM. Ndiboto FM. Which literally means people who are naked. <laughs> FM. <laughs> <laughs> and it was you, and I think, your friend Waga Fino. Uh, Fino, yeah, 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 yeah. And you would just talk about any and everything. It yeah. was R rated, though. It yeah, was yeah. Very adult stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it was very refreshing. It was probably one of my favorite things about the lockdown because there were so many challenges and I'm just like, okay, this one is different. Yeah. And I would just go there, but it was in Igbo. What was it? What was it about? Why? How did that start? I mean, it started with, um, I think Waga started it. You know, you always come on his, um, on live and be like, uh, you know, talking about random stuff, you know, and that's him. That's what, if you listen to my album, you see these kids, <laughs> you listen to these kids, you know, you did see that, that, that scenario, that environment, that, that we try to create that scenario for people, like you be in the beer parlor and, you know, the kind of talk that goes on, you know, when you're in, in uh, having, uh, and there's beer parlor and you call it beer parlor discussions. Yeah. Uh, so he was like, you know, talking stuff about all that. And then, I one that was listening to it, it was interesting. He had about maybe I think fifty listeners or fifty viewers or whatever. So I said, Let me go in. <laughs> I didn't even tell him. <laughs> you know, so I wrote him. I said, Ah Waga, I am poor. Nice we go. And then he called me ASAP. And then whoops. You know, we had more and more people, all the fans. Yeah, all the fans they came through. And also, Fino was around. You, we, were, we were chilling together because during the lockdown, uh, he came over and we were just together working on songs. We were like, there's nothing to do. Let's yeah. just chill and, you know. And then I was on the live, was, you know, entertaining people, just 
talking about random stuff like you know <laughs> random like, stuff random <laughs> random <laughs> about girls about <laughs> lifestyle you there's know. a lot of sex talk yeah too yeah sex talk too and people like her <laughs> and they like that you know i don't know something about these fans you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not about you the fans not just about me so, uh, a little bit about me though you know they like i think the fans they like they like those kind of you know talk they like it real. Yeah. You know, like if you can open, open that if you can keep it real with them at the same time, you know, you so you still have to watch it. So they know if you ban you or to come at you for <laughs> across the line. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we were just speaking random stuff and then it got interesting, you know. Fino came through and uh, I didn't even know Fino was sitting in the um, in, in, in the sitting room. He was there and he was listening. He was watching. And he came to the room because I was in the room doing it. And then he came and said, wait till he put his face and was like, you know, greeted the people and everybody was like, ah, Fino, Fino. It got more interesting. And, you know, people were like screaming. People were, they, so the random stuff started getting more interesting. Like yeah. everybody started following up. You know, Fino came through with his own uh, words. You know him now. <laughs> You know, so that was just it. Yeah. yeah. And then you guys put out a flyer and it now became, it was every Friday or something like that. Yeah. And then the next thing was uh, a live beer came to it. They yeah. Saw okay. It. Yeah. They and saw it. Boga Polo was yeah. like, oh, this is interesting. I think we should yeah. launch something with this and all that, you know. So it became big. I mean, I would log in and I, I, I've, there's no kind of conversation I didn't hear. Or more with the, with the <laughs> go out. Place. So, yeah. We'll go and out. I, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. Well done, man. Is it something you're going to continue doing? Because I know you still had one recently. Yeah, we so continue, it's not, yeah, we continued. Yeah. You never stopped. And I think it, it kept growing. You know, it's big now. Before yeah. Waga on its own will have, like I said, it started with 61 yeah, viewers. But now there's thousands uh, of people. Yeah, but now it's <laughs> going to 1,000. And when we come in, it gets, you know, bigger and bigger. So yeah. I think it's something we'll, we'll keep doing. Nice. Yeah, because it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. People like it, you know. It's Fridays and Sundays. So yeah. But it's done in Igbo. Do you mm -hmm. feel like you're alienating some people? Mm, not, not, not really. Not really that. Because at the same time, we have to promote our language. You know, uh, we try to mix it up. But whenever we try to speak English and try to, you know, add, they will say, no, 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 <laughs> go back, Igbo, 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 Igbo. You know, but at the same time, it's still an avenue for us to promote. Our language yeah. and um, yeah, I think yeah. it's sweeter with Igbo. I mean, I enjoy it. <laughs> I'm just trying yeah. to get other people involved. Uh -huh. I'm okay with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it stays that way. Yeah, so yeah. speaking of Instagram, something you <clears throat> did recently that went viral, caught a lot of people's attention, and I found extremely heartwarming was hey. a video of you and your dad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, I think you went to see him in Enugu, mm -hmm. and you went to the room and. You played a song for him, and it looked like he's in particularly in great health. Yeah. Um, why did you do that, and why did you feel the need to share it? What was that about? Yeah, I think it's something I do all the time when I go to see him. Yeah. You know, um, my dad he always supported me all through, even though it was difficult for my mom too at first. You know, but he was there to support me all the way. So, and he loves music. You know, so he's my father is very old now. I think he's about early nineties or there about. You know, and he, he, at this time, he doesn't recognize people like that. Yeah, you know, he's you know how it is. Like when you start getting old, you start losing your senses, senses yeah, yeah. and all that. You know, so the only way for me to let him know that I'm here is once I come in with my guitar. And I strike it, ja, 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 and <laughs> you will be like, ah, Chine do abiego, you know, you know, and that that's so uplifting, you know, for him. So whenever I come, I come to see him. The first thing I do is come with my guitar because I don't want to start saying daddy uh, or mama. Oh no, no, no. But once I strike that chord, he knows that I'm here. And the next thing, I start playing those tunes that he used to play when we were little. You know, I start, you know, I use that to like, it's also like a treatment for him, you know, he, to get back, you know, to old memories, yeah. you know. So, it's, I think music is also good for, uh, use music to heal people too. Yeah. So, I think that way, 
I think I'm doing yeah. <laughs> I'm doing my job. So you recorded. Why did you feel the need to put it out there? Yeah, I had to because it's also for the people. Like you see your parents, whatever you can do, it's, it's not it's, it's something you know. Because at this at this at this time, you see you can if you even if you buy him a Lamborghini, it, it will not mean anything to him. Even yeah. if you buy him or fly him, uh, fly him on a private jet, it will not mean anything to him, you know. But these little things that might not mean much to regular people, but for to him, it will mean a lot, yeah, you know. And also for the fact that he knows that his son is a musician, and he took out time to come home and play for me. It's it's it's, it's just something. Yeah. It's still beautiful. Is he still a fan of your music? A great fan. <laughs> he loves. He knows everything. Oh, really? <laughs> it's only my mom. <laughs> my mom. She will have to choose. <laughs> she will tell me I'm going from Kuku or those waste ones. Just keep it aside. That's why I ask. <laughs> even if even this, the music you played for your dad wasn't particularly. I mean, uh, the one I was saying. Oh my one, your name. And he was just smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, so, but your mom. Is not a fan of those ones. No, don't try it all. <laughs> you know, actually, my mom made me to go into gospel music, like do more gospel songs. You know, cause each time I came home I would, and I played those, you know, those. Asha, my, my normal, Asha, Asha. Hey, Asha. Hey, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, each time I play that, you'll be like, uh, she'll be like, hey. In Igbo, she be kede onye ne this boy. In a nena or se ugu. You know, not only this kind of song. I beg now, eh, make we hear something for this. I say, mommy, don't worry, I'll give you your own suit. You know, and then after some time, if I switch it up to chia nya man that chia ah, oh. then she goes, she will come out and <laughs> you know, you know. So that also reminds me of who I am. Yeah, like as the as flavor flavor of Africa. I'm yeah. a bit of everything. I'm about everything, you know, everything. Today I can, you know, test this way. <laughs> Tomorrow I can give you. <laughs> yeah, so for um, for I had to do that, you know, to fit in yeah. everyone. Yeah. Let's talk about growing up because you're, you're talking like it's obvious that your parents were a big influence in a lot of your decisions. Mm. Or I don't know. Okay. But let's talk about growing up. Um, let's go back. You, were you born in Enugu? Yeah, I was born in Enugu. But you're not from Enugu? I'm not from Enugu. I'm from Anambra. I'm from Mumuzi. But I was okay. born in Enugu. So okay. it's almost it's the same. Enugu, Anambra, yeah. yeah. So you were born in Enugu? Yeah. Went to school? In Enugu. Okay. Where did you go to school? Secondary school. Yeah. Primary Enugu. Secondary, secondary Enugu. Enugu. Then university, a little bit of uh, Nsuka. You know, I did music, a uh, diploma in music. Oh, you did a diploma? Yeah. So you already knew you were going to do music? I knew, I knew. Okay, yeah. so you did a diploma in music and yeah. then? Uh, then they had that strike around 2002 or thereabout. It's a long one. That was like a year and a half. Yeah, I was, I was caught in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So I came out and after that, I had to change, you know, course. I took another exams, the jam exams at that time. Yeah. yeah. And then it was... Um, I now went to University of Nigeria, Nugu Campus. That's okay. UNEC. And I was studying uh, business ma management. That's what they call it, management. Okay. Yeah. Which I didn't finish. I didn't finish because at that time, music kept, you know, calling so fast. I had to say, I, I told myself, you know what? Hold on. Then you can come back later. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just too much at that time. I felt everything. I had to make that decision. When did the music start? I think I would say... Everything started quite early. Very, I was uh, very early. You know, I was like, uh, I think I was like ten. I was with the church, which in the choir. In the choir, there was nothing I could do with the choir in the choir, and there's nothing I could do for them, cause uh, my sisters were there. I had to just follow them through, you know. But I loved everything. I, I loved them. I, I I picked interest with the drums, you know. I I loved the guy that was. I was going to close to the drummer. I was running errands for him just to be close to him, you know. And then my mother loved it. She loved the fact that I was doing, you know, the church. I was going the church way, even though, <laughs> you know, she she just loved it, you know. And then I picked interest, you know, on drums. It was, 
it was so it was everything for me i mean i could come on days that there was no service and just climb up there and be drumming and then i'll uh, i'll hear my pastor screaming who is that boy disturbing <laughs> i'm having a uh, uh, counseling wait when i'm done you continue so i'll go wait outside just to be sure that he's i will know when he's leaving i'll go just beside this car i'll sit there and wait for him so one day he came to me saw me sitting there waiting for him to leave so <laughs> <I> go, <laughs> he was like young man is this really what you want he was like, i see you all the time you know you're always coming here you're, just, you're always drumming what's up what's, what's up with this you're drumming is this what you want to do and i'm like yes he said okay if you're serious about it i have a friend he just came back from the states he's um he has a big band and he's looking for young musicians you know that can that will work for him he will train them in school and after training them they will start working for him he's working on opening a school of music or something so i was like yes this is what i want how old were you then? i was like between 10 11. who is what's this man's name you he's remember a, his name? yeah i remember the man the, the man he was introduced me to no, the man that, that is telling you this the pastor yeah, yeah. pastor victor Carey is his name okay are yeah. you still in touch with him yeah we talk <laughs> i saw him that was uh two years ago wow. and then once in a while we speak through a friend okay yeah so he told me if you're interested i'll give you the address you know you go but make sure the beginning of all yeah of beginning of everything but make sure you tell your parents yes. before you go there i said okay I knew if I told my mom, she would not let me. So, <laughs> so you didn't listen to him? At all, oh, I went straight. As I got there, it was just what I wanted. I was like, whoa. It was, I was so amazed. Everything was there. Yeah, everything Drums, was Drums. And music. it was their rehearsal day. So everybody, it was a big band. A band of like about 30 to 30 something people. You know, it was a big band. They had the, the brass session. They had the, the the piano session. They had the guitar session. They had everybody. This the 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 singers, you know. So it was like I I came in and, and they were already playing. I sat down. They opened it. I sat down. I was like looking at them. I was shaking. Like, what if these people tell me to go and play? What do I know? I don't know anything to play, you know. So at some point they they stopped and then the the leader, the man, him, the main man himself. He looked so fierce. He was like, he had this bald, he was so tall. He had this bald hair with beards, <laughs> you know. And then he came to me and said, young man, um, uh, where are you from? I said, I'm from Pastor Victor. He said, oh, my friend, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So wh what can we do for you? I said to him, I'm a, I want to be a musician. So I told him, he said, I should come here. <laughs> and all of them started laughing at me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And then he said, what instrument do you know how to play? I said, I, I, I know how to play the drums, but a little bit, just the church one, the one we play in the church. That's all I knew. You know, he said, okay, go and show us, go there. I was looking at everybody. I've never been on that kind of drum set before. You know, the church ones, yeah. like you know, normal ones. You know, so I went there, I sat on top of the drums. And then I started giving myself rhythm, like singing the, um, you know, the offering song. <laughs> I was giving myself rhythm as I was singing, you know. And then, you know, he liked that. He liked the fact that even though I didn't know how to play that much, but at least I could give myself yeah, brave a, enough to yeah start. to give myself a, 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 a rhythm a to rhythm. play another. Yeah, and all that. So he was. They were all laughing, and then at some point I stopped. I was looking at them. He said, okay, come. He said, okay, don't worry. Um, your parents, they live, you live with your parents? I said, oh, yes. He said, okay, I'll come and see them. And that was where the major problem was now. Was now, yeah. <laughs> Coming to see my my mom in particular. Oh, no. <laughs> he was never going to agree. Never. So I didn't know how to do it, but it was just something I have to do because the man insisted that he must. Because I was so small, he can't just take me without seeing my people, you know. You don't want to get into trouble and all yeah. that you know so later on he came he, he, i came to see him and then both of us and some other people uh, some of the uh, members of the band we all went together to see my parents i didn't even tell them what was going on <laughs> i just told my dad that something is going to happen that <laughs> let him just have an open mind that is made might not be what he wants to see but you know 
my dad already told my mom my mom was like eh so when the man came my, my mother first saw the man the way he was looking with all you know that fierce look <laughs> and you know and my mom was looking at the man like who saw <laughs> a devil or something <laughs> you know and then uh, the man sat down and then my dad of course they started talking and then at some point the man was like opening up and saying what the whole memo of the band is and how they are so profession professionals professional and how they you know there's other young boys that are also in part of the whole movement that they're still in training and by the time you know you know just random stuff they were just talking about and then my mom just interrupted them and be like excuse me sir <laughs> i don't want my son <laughs> to be a musician please better stop it now it's just that one he plays in the church apart from that one i don't want any other one and I, my mom was like, so the man was like oh i understand but you see so the man was like he he understood that this there's a talent here and, yeah and he could see that this is immediately i came there that it was just what i wanted so it was just back and forth and he had to go it was just i felt so bad because my mom already spoiled the show she she made sure i didn't go there again she told my sisters to watch me and make sure that i don't go there and if i go there that they should tell me oh, wow. you know and all that but i still had to go because there was nothing i could do but your dad was was not my dad have was, a problem yeah my, my dad didn't have a problem my dad was all ears he wanted to see what it's about yeah. he didn't want to give up like that you know you understand so he, he he didn't want to give up he wanted to like see what it's like instead of just like oh we don't want it you want him to be this you know and then so you I, kept going back i kept going back and then something happened they were going to perform they had this deal there's this oil company in uh, Eket, you know, and they had to perform for them. These guys came in, they are working there. So every, after work, every evening, they entertained them. Like a like, live band. Like a live band and all that. You know, a jazz band. It was a jazz band. Not okay. Yeah, it's, it's more like a jazz band. Jazz high life band. Okay. Yeah, that was where my high life started. You know, my guy used to be the guitarist to um, uh, Rex Lawson. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, so we played a lot of high life there. So they were moving there for three months. They were gonna be there. Wow! And at that time, I was in secondary. I was in CIC. You know. So you were like what, twelve, thirteen at this point? At that point, I was like, yeah, between thirteen, yeah, like fourteen, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. You know, and then they were moving, and for me, I had to go with them. I didn't know what to say, <laughs> but I just told myself, I'm moving. Yes. <laughs> yeah? I had to. I had to go. But the problem was, what, what, what am I going to tell my mom? What am I going to tell my dad? Exactly. My dad would not even allow me to, you know. I had to just go. I told my sister, listen, nobody is looking for me. If they are looking for me, just tell them, Chinedu went with some people. So were you, were you in boarding school? No, I was not. So you were just going to... Okay, finish the story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to school from my parents house okay but then at the same time when i come back from school in the evening i sneak in there to listen to rehearsals watch them play and all that but now you want to go to eket i want to go to eket completely just, yeah to be with them for that three months i was not thinking okay. right you know i i, I just felt this. yeah i felt they were just gonna leave and then my the whole, your dream yeah, would yeah die. The, the, the three months would just die you know it would just be dead like i was i, I, I was not gonna be doing anything you know and then it was so difficult for me because in as much as i made that decision at the same time i was looking at disobeying my parents yeah. at that time and what it's gonna be like you know I was so so afraid you know but i just had to to go so did you go to work at? i went to work at, i told my sister my the, our, our elder sister i just told her listen if they're looking for me just tell no but just Wait, once again you're what 13 14. yes so i went i went there <laughs> so <laughs> when i left i i heard my mother was looking for me and you know at that time there was no phones there was nothing so the man asked me you're coming with us did you tell you i said don't worry i've already i already told them they are fine my i told my dad my dad is okay with it so 
Ah, the man said, oh, your mom is troublesome. I hope she will not give me trouble. I said, don't worry, my dad can handle her. And I left. You know, pa- on, on leaving that day, as they were packing, I was still peeping to see if my mom was somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> was the bus. Ah, because if she came, no show. <laughs> you know, so I left. And then it was, big, it's, it's, it was big chaos in my house and... You know, finally, after every my dad, my mom went to my school, went to CIC to report me. Like, I'm looking for my son. She went everywhere. She she even gave up like at some point because my sister told her, "Mommy, don't worry, Chinedu will come back." He went with so so people. My mom said, "If I come back and see that man, I will tear him <laughs> into pieces. I will find." <laughs> he took my son. You know, <laughs> and when I came back, so you were away for three months. I wait for three months. You were away for three months with the band yeah. without your parents' approval. Yes. You just need to clear that up. Mm-hmm. At 13, 14. Mm-hmm. So when I came back, I didn't want to go to, to the house immediately because... You knew I was waiting for you. Yes. I knew it was just going to be something else. So I said, from the office, I just uh, took my school uniform <laughs> and prepared to school from there. I went to school. It was on a Monday. So you didn't go to school for three months? Obviously. I did. So it was on a Monday. Just I went there to see, to catch up, like see with my classmates, see what I can do. It was like they're preparing for exams and all that. And then when I, on reaching the school, my mom, I saw somebody like my mom with it. <laughs> I saw somebody like my mom with uh, <laughs> with the principal you know CIC was like it's a, a, a seminary school yeah, yeah so the they Catholic had school the Catholic it? school yeah 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 Catholic school so they had this uh, the the principal was uh, reverend father so I saw my mom with the reverend father hey <laughs> and there was no way I could go back because I already passed the, the main gate so instead of going through where they were I said no I'm not going through there I'm, I was just gonna walk and change my 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 my, my, my movement, step. yeah. We change my walking style, change my movement so that she won't recognize. Because I mean, she could see from afar. She could still. It's not that far, but I was already in. There was no way I could go out. So I changed my movement. I was walking like a drunk. <laughs> I was, you know, and then my, I just heard, "Up on one day." <laughs> That's my son. That's of course, she knows her son. <laughs> How about you to do this? Yes, sir. Uh, up one more. <laughs> and then the next thing, <laughs> I just looked and I saw like about four students rushing to me. I started running. Now to escape, I can't go back through the gate because <laughs> those guys were just. Where are you running to? Yeah. <laughs> but there, there was another exit through, uh, they call it Agang. Anybody, anybody that went to CIC will know. It was a gang. It was a river. Once you swim past that river, you're going to another side of the city, like camp. So I was just rushing there. Immediately I got that diving. I dived into the water, and then I was just trying to make it past that fence. Those guys just held me down. They caught me. The students. Yes. And as they were running to me, more people joined them. It was like <laughs> a, they were chasing an arm robber. Oh my god! And when they <laughs> caught me. They brought me straight to the assembly ground. You know where the students, everybody. Are. Ah! And there was this punishment they used to give that time. They call it allow it to penetrate. They will flog you. <laughs> and after giving you like about 10 strokes of cane, the, the Reverend Father will shout, allow it to, the whole student will say penetrate. <laughs> so they will stretch you. After flogging, they will stretch you. And you, you know, hi, <laughs> these people, they were fl- I'll start again. They, they will continue. So your mom was there when she this was, was there. She was there. They were flogging me and <laughs> doing all that caricature. I was crying. At some point, she too started crying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was so bad. Like, I was so, I was in pain. <laughs> like, the, the, the principal now said, this is to show you students that we don't take in discipline. We don't take it here. If you mess up, we are going to deal with you severely. <laughs> this boy, he left his parents' house and went away with some holy guns. <laughs> and they didn't even... You know, what hurt me the most was that they didn't know that the band I went to was just a, it was such a professional movement. You know, 
like if you want to be a musician and all that. I mean, I was in the school band, like the you know matching band. That was not that was not gonna pick me anywhere. But when I what, I agree because I was in the school band. Okay. It took me nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, but when I went there, when I went there, what I saw, you know, I knew I was in the right direction. But they, I didn't know how to explain to them because at that time to be a musician was like a taboo. My mom used to tell us that there was one of his brothers that went into music and then when he came back, he made his head somehow and he became a Rastafarian. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. That to, today, that guy, so that's what I want to be like. I be, that's who I want to be like. You know. So I was at then, after all the you know, flogging and all that, I went back to the principal's office. They said, my mom, they told my mom to take me home and that like they should give me some time that I will get back to my senses and I'll leave those people. I told the principal, I said, you call these people hoodlums, they are not one. This is a professional band. You need to see them. Like, and at all the money, we, I, uh, we made some money, so they paid me. Every show at that time was like 1,000 naira. So my, my girl would put all the, all the shows, it was about, we played about 20 sets. So he put one one thousand naira for each one in an envelope. I said, "Give it to your dad, man. This is your show money." So you made good money. Yeah. So I, I went home and I gave him. I said, "Dad, see what I mean." And dad was like, "Oh yeah, well, you people even make money." Oh, that's that's. He was already on board. Was the word? Sounds like me. me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So I gave him. I gave him everything. You know. My mom didn't even want to listen to that. Her own was that I am not following that man. It's not possible. You know, so after all that flood, you know, I, I now, as we were going on, I now turned to her and said, you've done your worst, bro. There's nothing they could do to me anymore. It's just better you allow me because I'm not stopping. I will keep going there. I didn't even know what gave me that. I don't know why I had that much courage. You know. At some point, she gave up because I was just too pressed. And she gave up. She stopped disturbing me. So after the punishment, you still went back to the band? I band. still went back to the band. And this time around, I became a serious member because I had more. And I now went, I was, I was involved now, yeah. you know, because they were teaching me how to, you know, drum properly and how to do some part singing, like, you know, the treble, the soprano, the bass, you know. So I started very well. Now I started learning music the proper way, not what I was doing in the church, the proper way. You know, so they taught me everything. I served the band for like nine years, for one wow. to ten years, yeah. What were you doing on the band? I was a drummer at some point. I moved to the piano. I was a pianist. And then at some point, I was playing the piano and I was also a singer for them. So I had some songs I could sing and play at the same time for the band, you know. And then from there, the, the band was moving to Portacourt, you know, to bass permanently. In Portugal, you know, so that was going to be very difficult for me to now leave. At this point, you were already in university already. Yeah, they, I, it was them that sponsored my uh, uh, sponsored me to Nigeria uh, to study music in. Yeah, Nigeria. yeah because that was oh, wow. the main point. You go, you study music and come back and come back. So after that strike, that was when they were moving, and I had to say, I told myself, no, I'm not moving with them. It was going to be too much leaving everything and move to Portugal. Just stay with them there. They were living in Enugu. Okay. Yeah. You know, so when I came home, my mom was like, uh uh-uh, uh, why are you here back? You're not following Chris or the man's <laughs> name. <laughs> so you're not following him again. I said, no, they are moving. So I decided to come back. Do you look back at that incident and I mean, feel like it steps too far? Um, or do you feel like I mean it definitely be, made you who you are today? Yes, because being persistent. Yeah. But do you ever look back and be like, okay, that was a lot? I think that was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine what my mom went through. Yes, you know. But at the same time, that's the price I had to pay for being where you are. Where I am. So they all walked out. Yeah. What's the band? The band. I think they are in Portacourt still. Are you still in touch with them? Um, are they all still together? No, 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 no. There's a lot of people. You know how it is now. Yeah. You know, there's movement here and there. Is Chris no. Oda still there? He's still there. Well, he's happy. He's what does he think about you? <laughs> he's proud. Yeah. He's proud of me now. Yeah. So they leave to Portacourt. You are still in Enugu. So I came back to Enugu. And then what? And when I came back to Enugu, it was like, okay, what am I going to be doing? I said, Mom, okay, I'm back. What do you want me to do for you now? She said she's, she had this uh, small business. 
you know, but it was selling jewelry. Because I, I came from a very poor home. We were very, very poor. You know, my father used to be very rich, but when they had me, you know, we were like 12 in the family. Very 12, I was the 10th. Okay. You know, very 10th. 10th child, yeah. Number 10. In your family? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You know, so uh, when I came home, there was nothing. My mom had this uh, small jewelry shop. She was selling you know, all these small, small earrings. Not even the original ones. <laughs> you know, but she said, yeah, come and, you know, join me. And that's the only thing. So I went with her one or two weeks. I was like, ah, hell no. I'm not doing this, man. Your older siblings were out of town or? Mm, the older ones. They were... All different, they were all in different places. In different yeah, places. Yeah, in different places, yeah. And then I, I told my mom, I can't do this. I came back home, I said, I had to go, at, at that point, I had to go into the streets and join different bands. So remember, when I was with the band, you know, it was like proper music, learning to become a musician. But now, I'm now a musician. Now I had to now leave that and now go and start playing and or let me say using music to make ends meet. Yes. Yeah, an artist. Yes. Not artist. Okay. Hustling. Hustling. Yeah, music okay. hustling. So I joined different bands. I joined I had the, I was playing in two two different churches as an instrumentalist. And then I had uh, other bands that on Fridays play one bar, Saturday this is another band with another bar. So which bars were you? Ah, local, local <laughs> bars. <laughs> yeah, filling station at the end. Yeah, filling station. Because I did my, my train bar exactly mm-hmm. when I was in law school then. Mm-hmm. I remember. At, at, I think at some point <laughs> yes. I saw you. I saw you at some point. You had this. That's uh, what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw you. You, like, you came for this, uh, uh, I think Guinness or something. Yes, it, yes. Was, a, it was a, yeah, one of those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so... Yeah. I was you know, just hustling. And at that point, I never thought of becoming an artist. I didn't even know what it you was. You were just enjoying? Just enjoying the flow. I never... Were you making money? Yeah, I was. I was, you know, because every night I will go home with like 100,000, 80,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's not bad. Well. Yeah, that was when I like, when I, I really was into it. I, yeah. When I started making a whole lot. Yeah. At first, it was not making that much sense, but at some point, it started making a whole lot of sense. So, how do you make money at bars? So, you sing at bars, people spray you or... Yeah. Now, listen, they don't pay us, okay? Um, and that made me just like the way I do my music now. I look at what people want to do. Yeah. I try to do timeless music. Yeah. Because I know if I get it right, I'll have food on my table for a long time. Yeah. You know, I don't like to do trendy music. Not that it's not good, but I don't like to do that because I feel I'll be limited. But with playing timeless music, I will yeah, always make money. I'll be limited. You can't. That's. I will always fit into whatever. Just yeah. like this pandemic period, you know, a lot of a lot of artists are struggling because I think they put their eggs in. But you was busy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and even if it's they say fifty people in a place, they, they must need music. You know, and my music will fit in there, so it's still good for me. So the music you're playing at this bars for you was it your original songs or was it? It wasn't my original songs. It was like, uh, you know how it, how it is there. I'll go to the market. It was CD period. I'll go to the market and then I'll buy different songs. You know, yeah. I, it's a long night. Like when I, if it's a Friday night, I know we started from 8 p.m. to like 2. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So from 8 to 10, I go with blues. So when I go to the market, I'll get CDs like Kenny Rogers, <laughs> Craig David. I'll buy all of them. Craig David was a hit. Yeah, so Boys to Men, Michael Lenz to Rock, all that repertoire, I'll get it. And I'll start, I'll start uh, uh, scoring them. You know what I mean by yeah. score? Yeah, yeah. Start scoring them, instrumentation, and also the lyrics. I'll score, I'll write it down. You know, listen and play, yeah. stop, listen. Yeah, I'll write it down. And then I was learning how to perform them. I had this piano, so I put my put the piano in front of the mirror, and I'll be singing. And then I'll be asking myself, how even when the girls come, how do I say these things? That <laughs> <I can't?"> you know, <laughs> you know. So 
you know, I, I, I had to learn that way. And then during from like 10 p.m. to like 12, 1, I go with the high life, you know, I got a lot. And of course, some of the songs we used to play with the band way back, yeah. it was all part of uh, what, you were what I was playing, you know, and then uh, and also some gospels later. Maybe when these guys are high, they are drunk, I can help. If you if you remember Jesus. Ah, they will remember God. I will, I will just, I'll throw that in and then. Small you know. like a chawari. Yes, yeah, so they'll be carrying their the chairs and bottles upstairs, you know, up in their head, and they'll be, you know, doing that, uh, forming that circle, and, you know, yeah. it's just all fun for, for me. So with that, I made money. Because when I start with the blues, I know what to say to the, to the people. I see some love, I mean, if I see lovers sitting at the table. Yeah. I'll look at them, I'll say, yeah, to all these lovers sitting, sitting here, I have a special one for you. You know, like I can see a girl, she's on red, and I know this red means a lot, it means love, and they'll be like, oh, he's talking about, you know, like, I was trying to create special moments for, for people, you know, so that way also I'm learning. I didn't know it was all learning, it was all a learning process for me to you know, where you were going. Yeah, where I was going, you know. How long did you do that for? For a long time. I think I did it for an extra, from when I left the band, an extra six, seven years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So why did you leave school? Because, because you dropped out of yeah, school. Yeah, I had to leave school because to do these things, it was giving me... me yeah, 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 it was giving me issues, like combined school and, you know, we lie with the bar playing, it was just too much, you know. For my, for me, I was like, I have to be at one place. Yeah. So I had to tell myself, if I'm do, if I'm in school, let me wait, do the school, finish, and now come out. But for me, I was like, if I'm waiting, nobody's waiting for you. Things are already rolling. What year were you when you left school? I was uh, in the se- second, yeah, year. second year, second semester. What did your parents think? Your mom. <laughs> my, my mom already gave up. He, when she heard I left, she said, mm. before I'm gone, she was like, yeah. whatever. She wasn't surprised. She wasn't, she was she just, died. for me, my mom was like, whatever, I'll concentrate on my other son. This one, <laughs> this one is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad, uh, because I was going and I was making money, I was supporting the family, you know, so he, he saw it like, he's doing something. You know, even if it might not be everything I want him to be, but at least he's doing something. I, I can see he's trying. He's yeah. leaving home, and each time he's coming back, he's coming back with goodies. And he's not doing something bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so... So you had you, you had played at bars, <laughs> bands, <laughs> alone for about five, six years. Yeah. yeah. So you were kind of famous, then. Yes. You are very, very well known. Even without having uh, no uh, album about Just being a bar. Just be out. Live band performer. If you come to where I was playing, like, even if you had a show, you know, nobody's coming there. They're all coming to my, my bar. <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide, okay, let's make a career out of this and okay. become a proper artist? Well, yeah. And move to Lagos. That's a transition, right? Yes. Yeah. At some point, when I was playing in those bars, it was like, some people will come to me and be like, yo, why don't you make these things up and have your own album? Because at the end, I remember one man, I remember one man, I think I've forgotten his name, but he's like, uh, he's like CEO of uh, Dome Records or something. I think his name is, I don't know, maybe Chris or something. On tall, fair man. He was, came to me one day, you know, I was playing, he called me, gave me some money and said, start recording your own songs. So after playing that day, I was, I was at the backyard, you know, cooling off. I was saying to myself, I think this man made sense, so, but this recording I've always been, because I looked at musicians that, at that time I saw Peace Square, they came to the bar at one point. And immediately they came, ah, Peace Square. Ay. The manager of the place now turned to me and said, Hey, stop that music. <laughs> the real stars are here. <laughs> yeah, you can't trust me. Stop that music. <laughs> I was like, Hi. I went somewhere. And then <laughs> Peace Square came in, Root Boy came and then said, It is not same thing. Ah, all the girls that were cheering me, small, small. <laughs> they were cheering with the big beat. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I was watching. So, you know, all those moments was like, 
a call time for me. I do I think. You can't end up here. You've done this thing for so long. You have to start recording your, you have to start being like an artist, you know. And then I ask myself, how do I go about this? Because I've never been, the, the only recording we used to do way back was, you know, the manual one. You know. At that time, the digital recording just came out. And you had no idea about it? I had no idea about it because I was all, it was, it was all live music for me. You know, so I took up the challenge. The next time I went to a studio, I saw one guy, I, uh, he was a design engineer. I asked him, uh, how do you do this? I want to learn how to be an engineer in the studio. Not even recording first, just to be an engineer. So maybe I can work here in the morning, then at night I go do my normal life. He said he would teach me, but I have to be paying him. We agreed on price. <laughs> and then I was paying like 1000 every day. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I went, I was sitting near him, how to open a project, I would write. <laughs> how to add the, wow. the tracks, I will write it down. So before uh, then I'll go on time before he comes, I'll already open a project, write the names and you know, just how to record, how to add effects and all that. So I started learning that. And then when some artists come to the studio, I'll be recording them. So most of them they don't know this guy can sing so well, like do all the backup vocals and all that. And one day I surprised some people that came. They were having difficulties with creating one chorus and all that. I just helped them. You know, I did the chorus for them. They were like, ah, this guy is bad, dude. you know. And then I saw Nigger Ro, um, Mr. Ro now. We yeah. call him Mr. Ro now. So I saw Mr. Ro, he came to work in that studio. And then he said, ah, boy, maybe you they play for City Center. I said, yes, Nami. He said, ah, you they even be for our home. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so they work here, so they work here, they also do that one. He said, okay. He now put his track. I helped him to do some of the choruses. You know, all those songs with Negaro and those albums. I, I did some production. I, 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 at that time, I now became also a producer. Because yes, I could play the piano. It was just learning how to do the engineering work and, you know, put them together. So I started producing. So I now had to sit down on my own without that guy teaching me. Now, now I don't know what to do. You know, so I became a producer. At the same time, I was still playing. So it was double money making for me, you know. I was making money both sides and at the same time enjoying it and at the same time learning how to be an artist because yeah. I had to know how to record myself first and all that. You know, so that was a process for me. I started recording and working with Negaro and the album we did, it went viral. Well, it was big. And the East it started with the East. So most of the shows he would call me to go perform with him, like back him up. You know? So I started now also learning how to not just doing the live music and performing for, but now performing to the crowd, you know? So it was a different vibe for me. So I had to pick all these things, you know, and put it together. So at some point, um, uh, I now told myself, okay, I, I'm now paying for my own record. I started creating songs, you know? So my first song was Nabeni. And that Nabanya was a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that Nabanya was a thing I used to say, slogan I used to say, whenever I come to play in that bar, I'll tell people, ah, up on Nabanya, Kifeli nigger, man. I'll tell all of them, ah, an Abanya. So I'll say, somebody say Nabanya, everybody will be shouting, Nabanya, Nabanya. So I said, okay, I'll use this Nabanya to create a song, just like that man told me. So I now put it together. I said, no, I will not do a Nubu studio. I will come to <laughs> yes, I will come to Lagos. <laughs> this is Lagos. Yes. So I came to Lagos. That was um, 2000 and... I think 2007. I came to Lagos. Went to one studio in Sulu. One producer called Albert Carlo. You know, it's an OG. So I went there. We booked a session. Paid him. So in the rock, uh, Mr. Rock came through. And then we did Nina Banya. After doing the song, we finished it that night. You know, I was like, which one is this now? But yeah, we just put it slides, you know, just like that. Um, we came back. I said, ah, this song, how do I promote it? No marketer, nobody to listen to me. But the first thing is, I will start promoting it from this bar. So what will happen is, before I play, 
I'll give them, I'll, I printed a few CDs. I gave, uh, there was a music system there. I gave the guy that was in charge, I gave him the CD. I said, keep playing this song till I come on stage. That's so, indeed the whole vibe. Yeah, so if he's playing it, I'll go somewhere and be watching them. Let me know their, their reaction. So as they're playing this song, up and up, so people will be like, ah, is he already here? They will be looking at this at the stage to see if I'm the one saying it there. So see that it's really catching them. You know, so and then I will now come on stage and be like, yo, you're just you just listen to my new song, you'll be out. But if you want the CD, we were selling it here for 200 naira. So people were requesting. They bought all that one. I we had to print another one, another more copies for my own uh, money and just yeah. at that bar, you know, just doing it there. You know, so it just from there, one day uh, the song started going going more viral. You know, Obino Music now heard the song and gave me a call. Said my name is Obino Music. Uh, yeah, the Obino Music. Yeah, <laughs> in Alaba. I said what? So I now have a marketer. You know, because it was at that time it was if you have a marketer, they will buy off your album, they will give you money, and you know that's it for you. You're dead. Like you mm-hmm. don't have. I will say the market, you know. You know, ask me, do you have other songs? Can they make up an album? At that time, I only had three songs. I said, yes. I have <laughs> songs. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, come to Lagos next week. Let's talk. That was it. And that was how you moved to Lagos and became. I said, my movement to Lagos was gradual. This is going to the way, you know. And then, because everything was in any I was, and I was okay in any when I moved to Lagos, was it was it was like I was almost like I was big in any world with that album. So I saw myself like I'm bigger than this place. Need to conquer all. I need to move, you know. So I had to make that decision. One day I took up my travel bag, joined the night bus. <laughs> Didn't know where I was going to. I knew I I knew about through Lagos. So you know some of the. To get a place, to get a hotel, you have to pay big, you know. But in Sulu, there are all these uh, small local. I don't know. They call it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm okay. 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 just joking. You know, so in Sulu, they, they are shower hotels. You know, they are very cheap. You know, I know they go there so for their shower. You don't hide about it. No, I knew because that was where when we came to record that song it was in Sulu, so we had to stay. Then one of the, one of those, yeah. So I found that if you come out, it was big business for them, like you know. But the good thing is, in the night it's busy, so we do we book nice session. So in the morning, all their showers they don't get customers. So I sleep time everywhere, calm. So I said, okay, I'll be going to the studio at night while it's buzzing here. Then in the morning, when all these girls we don't get customers. Finish for morning everywhere in the day camp and now come back. Awesome. Yeah. So I booked the hotel when I came here. I didn't know nobody. It was only Negara in you. Well, he had his place, he's, he's married, and you know, mm-hmm. I didn't want to go there to stay. But I just booked that. I said, let me stay here. We're paying one eight, one thousand eight hundred every, every <laughs> right. night. And when you get there, they give you candle and mosquito coil. <laughs> There was no lights. <laughs> no lights. <laughs> but there's light, but if they bring it, if they, if they don't bring it, you're yeah, like, yeah. just open the windows and receive fresh air. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was a virgin up till 24. Tineke? Uh-huh. No. I'm telling you. Looking at she signed the church. Looking at she signed the church.